Hi everyone. This is the first of three to four videos on simple linear regression or SLR in which we explore the relationship between the price of a vehicle and its odometer reading. To guide you through simple linear regression, I've come up with eight regression guidelines. These are questions or topics that may be asked about each regression situation. Just a little overview of regression. Regression is a tool that's used with bivariate data. And bivariate data is, are, is data that consists of two quantitative measures recorded on each subject. I, I use the word in parentheses, each, or quotations, each subject in the sample. So in this example right here, what you see is a situation that's becoming so problematic in Australia, and that is shark attacks. They've got a growing number of shark attacks and on surfers in particular. So you see this surfboard, and you see the bite mark on the surfboard. The uh, um, goal of regression is to make a prediction. You've got two quantitative variables. In this case, you've got the length of the shark and the bite radius. And the bite radius is essentially the radius of the circle from the center out to the edge. Okay, so is there a relationship between the bite radius and the length of the shark? The predictor in this case is what you're trying to make, what you're trying to use to make a prediction. What you'd like to do is predict from the bite radius the length of the shark. So the information you're going to use is the bite radius. That's called the predictor variable. The response variable is the variable that's being predicted. In this case, we're trying to predict the shark, the length of the shark, from its bite radius. In the example that we're going to explore in these series of videos, we're going to examine the relationship between the price of a vehicle and its odometer reading. It is bivariate data because there's two quantitative variables collected on each vehicle. Those quantitative variables being uh, the price and its odometer reading. How, uh, what's the mileage on the car? The goal of this SLR, simple linear regression problem, is to make a prediction about the price from its odometer reading. So in our case, the predictor is what you're predicting with the odometer reading. And what you're trying to predict, the response variable, is the vehicle price. So to collect this data, so we've got this data. This data is read into StatCrunch. The first thing that any statistician does with a set of data is try to visualize it. And there's lots of visualization tools. On StatCrunch, the, the primary tool is for bivariate data called a scatter plot. So if I go to, if I go down to, I scroll down and let me bring this up a little bit farther so you can see, under stat and under graph, I've got scatter plot. Now the x variable is your predictive variable. So our predictive variable is the odometer reading. The y variable, which is what we're trying to predict, the response is the price. So then you select your x and y variables under scatter plot, compute, and what you get is a situation or a graph like this. So this graph depicts the odometer reading. Let me bring it up for you. There you go. The odometer reading for the vehicles, for a selection of vehicles, a sample of vehicles, and the price of those vehicles. The y, the y value values are the price, the x values is the odometer reading. So I've copied that here, and you have the, again, you have the y variable being the price, the x variable being the odometer reading. And from this, the second regression guideline, the first regression guideline is just identifying the predictor and response. The second regression guideline is describing this relationship. Okay, How can we describe the set of data that relates odometer reading and price? 
as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. So what are those words we want to use to describe this, this, uh, this scatter plot? The first, so there's three aspects, three things that I'd like to, to you to talk about when you're asked to describe a scatter plot. The first item that I'd like you to talk about is the direction. And the direction has essentially there's three options. You could have a, a positive relationship between the variables, which means as one variable goes up, the other one goes up, sort of in that fashion. A negative relationship between the variables means as one variable goes up, the other one goes down. And no direction means there's no discernible trend, no visible trend in the data. In this case, it's very helpful to sort of sketch where you think the trend line is, sort of looks like that. It looks like a negative relationship. As the odometer reading increases, the price decreases. So there's a negative relationship between odometer reading and the price of the vehicle. The more miles your car has, the less its value. The second aspect of a relationship for describing a relationship is the linearity. That is, if there is a relationship. So if there's a relationship, if you find that there is some something that allows you to describe the, the relationship, the, the pattern in the data, talk about the linearity. Is that relationship linear or nonlinear? And linear data is data that goes increases or decreases at a constant rate. So in other words, if the if the if the price in this case is decreasing, is it decreasing at a constant rate? Nonlinear relationships have a variable rate of increase or decrease. So it might increase something like that. It might peak like that. All those are examples of nonlinear relationships. Again, the data is not going to perfectly follow any of these trend lines. So again, sketching the trend line, it looks like that sort of mirrors the data. That looks linear. So there is a linear and negative relationship between odometer reading and price. And the last item that I ask you to describe is the strength of the relationship. Now, the strength of the relationship is measured by a tool called the Pearson Correlation Coefficient, or R. Okay, so R is the symbol for the correlation coefficient. Now the correlation coefficient varies from negative 1, so negative 1 is less than or equal to R, which is less than or equal to 1. Negative and positive R values just determine whether the relationship is positive or negative. But it's the magnitude of R, the, the absolute value of R, which is what we're really interested in. R, for R values between 0.7 and 1, your relationship is considered strong. For R values between 0.4 and 0.7, your relationship is considered moderately strong. And for R values between 0.1 and 0.4, your relationship is considered weak. Any, any uh, correlation that falls between 0 and 0 0.1, this is the absolute value, so it, it would be actually between negative 0.1 and positive 0.1, so an absolute value between 0 and 0 0.1, is considered no relationship. So those are sort of rules of thumb for determining the strength of the relationship. To obtain the measure of correlation, let's go back to the stat crunch data, and you have to go to stat, and it is under summary statistics. Oh, excuse me. And correlation. What do I want to correlate? I have to, I want to correlate the price. I have to hit my control button, at least on a PC, and odometer reading. Then I just compute. The correlation between price and odometer is negative, which indicates the direction which we already knew from the picture, negative 0 0.805, we'll round to three decimal places. So the correlation, the, the R value, the Pearson correlation for these data is negative 
0 0.805. That falls in the strong category because the absolute value of negative 0 0.805 equals positive 0 0.805. So that is between 0.7 and 1. So to sum up the relationship, here we've got a negative linear and strong relationship between the odometer reading of a vehicle and its price.